you who are true Aryan Germans will share the glorious destiny of our fatherland. You are the pure-blooded, the master race. It is your divine right to rule, and the Nazi party stands ready to put you into power. It is for you to command all Germany, and someday, the entire world. That's how Hans became a superman. They gave him a uniform and they pumped up his ego. He wasn't just a little fellow out of work anymore. He was a member of the master race. His wife couldn't quite understand. Even though he was a superman, there wasn't any food in the house. Stupid woman. Didn't she realize that the Nazis were going to make jobs for everybody? There would be plenty of food and clothing and a new house. Everything they wanted. The glorious future of Germany was to be theirs. And their children would someday rule the world. But his wife, silly woman, still wondered where the next meal was coming from. Hans didn't like that kind of talk. It was dangerous. For that kind of talk, people should be put in jail. Hans had swallowed the bait all right. And these were the men who baited the hook. Why? So that Hans could come to power? Of course not. So they could come to power. They would merely use Hans to help them get there. He would do the dirty work for them. Hans and thousands of others like him, all playing a sucker's game. They gambled with other people's liberty, and of course they lost their own. A nation of suckers. Hitler needed these people. There was lots of work to be done. There were trade unions to be smashed, because unions were organized and might offer resistance. There were many political parties in Germany. These the Nazis destroyed. They were determined to smash every organization where people might band together and resist them. There were Jews to be beaten and killed. The Jews were not powerful, but they were a convenient excuse for all the nation's ills. And besides, a Nazi party member could not take over this man's stall. Hundreds of Catholics were put in jail, because the Catholic Church had strength and could resist the Nazi drive for power. They had split the nation into a hundred pieces, and then one by one, they had destroyed the pieces. Over these broken pieces, the Nazis rode into power. One party, one nation, one religion. These men had won their struggle for power. They now ruled all of Germany. But still they had trouble with their oldest and most persistent enemy, the truth. They found that truth does not die easily. And so they decided to abolish truth. One great source of truth is literature. So they burned books, 20 million of them. Many great men in Germany who were spokesmen for truth were jailed or driven from their country. Teachers, writers, scientists. Education was discouraged. In five years, college attendance dropped 53%. It was forbidden to listen to a British radio program or read an American newspaper. In Nazi Germany, you had to get your information from Dr. Goebbels. He knew what was best for you. You couldn't see this movie or listen to this music. And you couldn't watch Joe Louis fight because the champion had black skin. He disproved Hitler's theory of Nordic supremacy. Albert Einstein, one of the world's great scientists, disproved that theory too. He was non-alien, so he had to leave Germany. His mind was dedicated to the search for truth, and the Nazis, having sold a lie, were most afraid of truth. The church was one force in Germany still strong enough to proclaim the truth in public. No doubt is possible that we Christians are in a grave battle. Against us stands a faith out of blood. The battle signals range from cool repudiation to hate-filled causes. 
weapons are used that centuries have dulled. The aim of this battle is to dislodge Christianity from our fatherland. This Catholic priest was arrested the following day on charges of immorality. The Protestant church also continued to try and fight for truth. He who desires liberty for himself cannot deny it to others, lest he lose what he has gained. This is the great lesson the world can learn from Germany. The Nazis put this man in a concentration camp. There were others who spoke for truth, and I am proud to say that educators were among them. And what, may I ask, is an Aryan? I don't know myself. But let us see what our present so-called authorities have to say about him. They say he is tall. Slender. Blue-eyed. And blonde. There is no Aryan race. And more important, there is no master race. There are people who may find these ideas convenient, but science cannot support them. There is no scientific proof that there's any correlation between a man's racial characteristics and his native ability or character. In all racial groups, we find the same range of potentialities. We find idiots and geniuses. We find criminals and philanthropists. We must judge each man as an individual and not by the color of his skin or his eyes or by the length of his nose. Come in, gentlemen. Make yourselves comfortable. There are many differences between individuals. We each have different capabilities, different backgrounds, different views about what's right and what's wrong. Like the difference between me and these gentlemen who have just arrived. But that is not the difference in race. It is a difference in the way we think. Remember that. And remember that there is no master race. That is a scientific truth. Anyone who tells you otherwise is lying. <laughs> 